Hi, my name is Kevin Callahan, and I'm the author of Accessorizer. This is um, video number three in the Accessorizer Made Simple uh, series, and I'm going to cover um, some of the, the styles and coding styles and uh, some of the preferences, but there are, there are so many preferences and coding styles, including configuration sets. You can import and export um, for group uh, consistency uh, that I can't cover them all in, in just this video. It would be way too long, so I, I uh, urge you to consult the quick start guide, which is actually not that quick, unfortunately. But I'm going to try to cover the basics right here and to get you started. Um, um, as mentioned in the earlier videos, you're, you have your kind of general preferences set right here. Um, you have a default table where you can enter a type and then choose your kind of your property specifiers here. So if you have a custom view or you want to add a string, you want that to be copy, however you want. You can put anything you want in there. Um, you also have in this area um, a bunch of switches for turning on init methods, obje object width, init width, um, nil value for key, and things like that. Uh, you can do your key pass, and those will all be appended to your implementation output if you want to do that. But let's take a look more at um, the coding style. So in the coding style tab here, we have a little um, interface for setting your, your IVAR prefix, your IVAR suffix, and then your argument prefix if you're going to do explicit accessors. Um, you also have an option here uh, for the if you're just generating from properties and you're not actually declaring IVARs, that your at synth and your uh, your access to your um, actual variables will include that prefix that you've defined. Um, okay, so the first thing let's just take a look at IVAR prefix, which is fairly common. Um, right now. I'm going to drag in a set of, we're going to work just in the interface now instead of in Xcode so you can just kind of see what's, it's much easier to work here um, to demonstrate this. So you can see that I've got some IVARs with the underscore, but if I were to generate my properties, of course the IVARs contain the underscore. However, if I tap on this um, radio matrix and you have this choice in my custom text field here, you can see that that was stripped out. Now, this is fully customizable, so if I made this a double underscore and hit return, now that's switched to double underscore, but none of my um, IVARs here were double underscore. Let me put one in here. And now if I regenerate, you can see because name has the double underscore, it gets stripped out. Okay, so this is totally customizable here. In fact, um, this text field, custom text field, allows for um, multiple IVAR prefixes if you separate them by comma. So I could have a W for week or O for outlet. So if I were to put, let me just, um, let, me put, let me put an O in front of, excuse me, O in front of this. And let me put, um, let me just put a, um, put a delegate in here, ID, W, delegate. Okay, so now if I generate, it's too, too much stuff. Oh, generate. Um, you can see that my delegate was assigned based on my code styling preferences here. Um, I've stripped out the prefix for the, uh, the for that delegate on my outlet here. I've stripped that out. The name gets that stripped out because it has the underscore, et cetera, et cetera. So you can have multiple prefixes set there. For suffix, the same goes, but you don't have, let me put that suffix there. And, you can see the delegate now doesn't have that suffix. Um, this suffix does not support multiple suffixes, suffixes, but you do get uh, multiple prefixes here. And let's see, one other thing. If you don't include a prefix, even though it's selected, um, accessories will ignore it. Also, if you were to use a, um, even though I have this set here with, a, let's say, a, a W, and I had a, um, you know, an eyebrow that was weather, Accessorize smart enough to know that, hey, you know, that's not being used as a prefix. Okay, in formatting, you have some options um, in properties, methods, and program box. So you have properties you can kind of set, set the space and you want out here in your output. Um, you can also put your synthesize on one line. And when you're doing constants of properties, when you're trying to create constants, you have a, a pretty powerful interface here for how you want your constant properties worked out. So please explore that. And methods, um, when you're doing methods or if you're doing explicit, explicit accessors, you can choose your header styles and you have um, 
header dock, you can choose whether you want bracing on the line or after the if or uh, while clauses and things like that. Proper mocks, you have all sorts of um, things you can um, customize for your titling in your problem box and when you want to turn them on for all these the various output um, that is being generated uh, for your implementation files. Um, configuration sets, this is a pretty complex uh, and very powerful feature allows you to create and take, and take a snapshot of all the preferences for, uh, that are in Accessorizer. You can store them, define them, um, and, and you can save those. You, you can load them by selecting a load. And you can export them. It's great for when you're doing um, uh, working with a team, or you're working on a, on a project that you're inherited, or if you're working um, you know, with various clients that have different styles of code that they want. So uh, that's a very powerful interface. That is explained in detail because there's some some things you need to know in the Quick Start Guide. So I'm not going to go through that now. Um, you have init style. You can choose. Uh, these two different uh, ones, the Apple recommended these days, and this is pretty common as well. Um, so for coding styles, that pretty much covers um, your preference. You do have a couple preferences over here in the general. You can set your font over here, all right? Um, in some of the code generations, you do get uh, different types of um, styles you can get inside specific to that kind of code, like key to archiving. You can put a key prefix here. Um, you have your copper zone stuff, you get um, class name, the, some of the other inputs when you're doing generate. So please do look at that in those areas as well. But by and large, your coding style is going to be here. Let's go back to um, in this coding style. Notice that we have three prefixes set for defining here. But if you're generating um, in with 64 bit runtime, you're actually not declaring IVARs your properties aren't going to have those prefixes. You're going to look at something. I'm going to type, type some in here. So here are some, some um, properties that do not have any prefixes, in, but you want, let's say in your synthesizer, you want the alias or in dialic, and you want to do direct access in your init methods or you're in dialic, and, and possibly in your override, your getter override, setter override. You're going to want a prefix there. So accessorize it with this switch turned on here. Properties use prefix or suffix will, will honor what you have in these settings. And if it's in a multiple prefix here, it'll just use the first one. So if I were to generate my synthesize statement, you can see right now all these um, these guys got that underscore. And uh, if I were to do uh, dialic, for instance, right? You can see, let me just open the window a little bit here. Um, dialic picked that up as well. You can see all the prefixes there. So that allows you to work with a 64 bit runtime and then get your styles. Um, there's a lot more to it, and the, the, uh, the guide goes into some more uh, stylistic features, but uh, that should get you started. Okay, thank you.